Red Dead Redemption 2 has one of the best open worlds in all of gaming. The cornerstones of this world are the towns that we can visit all across the map. In this video I'm going to be ranking all the towns from worst to best. This is mostly going to be based on the look of the town and things to do, but also on its place in the story and important events that happen there. Since I am going to be mentioning story content, please note there'll be heavy spoilers ahead. Coming in dead last at number 9 is Armadillo, which has been lost to cholera, and there's just not much here. The whole town is boarded up or burned down, and you'll often find bodies being buried or the town crier urging you to leave. There's only a handful of people left, but there's at least a general store and a saloon if you ever need anything while you're passing through. Because Armadillo is only available in the post game and is so far removed from most of the other locations on the map, I rarely see myself visiting this area. Area. The same can be said for the next entry, which is Tumbleweed that comes in at number 8. Tumbleweed is even further removed from civilization than Armadillo, but it is a bit more exciting. There's a general store, butcher, gunsmith, saloon, and a sheriff's office which has some bounties if you're needing something to do in the post game. The town is run by Sheriff Freeman who isn't afraid to kill any members of the Del Lobo gang to keep the peace in his town. Tumbleweed is a lot more run down than some of the other higher ranking towns on this list, and it's so low because I hardly ever visit it. And number 7 is the Van Horn Trading Post, which is located on the far right end of the map. Van Horn isn't a traditional town, but I thought it was still worth putting on the list. This is another area that's really dirty and run down, and the townspeople are very hostile. Van Horn is basically one straight road with a post office and hotel, fence and a saloon. This is where Bill and Arthur steal the dynamite to blow up the bridge, and where you can find Miss Marjorie and Bertram to do the stranger mission, The Smell of Grease Paint. This is also where Abigail is taken by the Pinkertons to be put on a boat. But besides those events, there's not much here, which I think makes it a good fit for this spot. And number 6 is Annersburg. Being a mining town, Annersburg has a cool layout with a train that runs through the middle of the town and lots of identical cottages for the workers. Annersburg has a gunsmith and a post office and is probably not visited by many players until the late stages of the main story, even though it is accessible in Chapter 2. Annersburg is where Dutch kills Leviticus Cornwall and where Mrs. Downs can be found trying to survive. Arthur brings a girl who was kidnapped by the Murphy brewed back home here, and the German family who Arthur helps at the end of chapter 2 have also settled here. Annersburg would be higher on the list if it didn't come into play so late in the story, and if it had more amenities available. At number 5 I've got Blackwater, which is the second biggest town or city in the game. This city is the site of the infamous Blackwater Massacre, the job that started the gang's implosion and caused the deaths of Heidi McCourt, Jenny Kirk and the Calendar Brothers. Because of the massacre, the town is swarming with Pinkertons and isn't properly accessible until the epilogue. Arthur does go down there one time, but it's only to scout it out from the outside, when he, Javier, Charles and Trelawney go to rescue Sean. When it is accessible, Blackwater has all the services you could possibly need, and John regularly visits it for missions in the epilogue. Some buildings are still being built, but I love the look of the town, it's straight out of an old western. But we're now down to what I would say are the main four towns in the game. And number four is Strawberry, which is found in West Elizabeth. Strawberry is a humble little town with a general store, hotel, sheriff's office, and post office. Strawberry is where Arthur and Micah basically kill the whole town after Arthur breaks Micah out of jail. So because of that, Strawberry is rarely, if ever, revisited for any main story missions. I often find myself fast traveling to Strawberry to use it as a starting point for going hunting, since there's a lot of good places nearby like Lake Owengila. There's a couple other interesting things to do here too, like stagecoach robberies from Hector or some random encounters, one that includes trying to find a kid's dog and another that involves finding a con man that's hiding out. Overall, Strawberry is a nice little town. And number three is the big city, Saint Denis, inspired by New Orleans and located in Le Moyne at the bottom right corner of the map. Saint Denis is just so much bigger than any other town in the game and so many notable events happen here, including the trolley station robbery and most importantly the Saint Denis bank robbery. You can spend hours doing everything this town has to offer, including a bunch of strange emissions and watching shows at the theatre. Saint Denis is run by the corrupt mayor Henry Lemieux that Arthur can help remove from power, and Angelo Bronte, who Dutch handles after being made a fool of. I love Saint Denis because it just feels so alive, there's so much detail packed into the city, there's really nice houses and buildings and people everywhere and random encounters happen all the time, but the negative of that is that there's the chance of setting off the law by accidentally running someone over with your horse. But thanks to the amount of detail and things to do, Saint Denis is an easy number 3 pick. And number 2 is Rhodes, which is mostly run by the Grey family until things go south between them and the gang, and Arthur and Micah end up killing most of them. Rhodes has a gun 
Smith General Store Parlor House, a fence on the outskirts, and a train station with a yellow building that really stands out. I like going to the Rhodes Parlor House to play blackjack, which is the best table game in my opinion. Rhodes has a simple layout. There's a main road with everything you need, and then a small curve where you can find the parlor house. There are some houses along the outside, but they don't really do much. Rhodes has a big bank too, which I recently found out is robbable if you have the special or ultimate edition of the game. There are a few notable events that happen in Rhodes, like the shootout with the grades that I mentioned earlier, Sadie's shopping trip, and giving away the moonshine for free with Arthur and Hosea. There are some good stranger missions that you can start, like the first part of the ties that bind us, and the iniquities of history. You can also come to Rhodes to see Alden, who'll give you some stagecoach robbery tips. Rhodes is not nearly as impressive as Saint Denis, but it's associated with Chapter 3, which is my favourite part of the game, and I just really like to visit it. And at number 1 is the livestock town Valentine. I just love the look and aesthetic of the town. Like Blackwater, it's got that old western vibe to it. It's the first proper town we get to access in Chapter 2, and we spend a lot of time here which helps it out as well. Valentine is in a really good spot too, it's almost in the centre of the map. It has all the services you could want, including a gunsmith, two saloons, and a big bank that when robbed, can give you enough money to last the entire game. There's also the Sheriff's Office, which gives you two of the better bounties in the game. You Benedict Albright! There are many random encounters to be had here as well, especially with the O'Driscolls, with the back room of the Doctor's Office being my favourite side business to rob. Valentine is the site of many important and fun events that happen in the story, including the saloon fight, Arthur and Lenny's big night out, and the shootout with the townspeople and Cornwall's men, making this the third or fourth town on this list that the gang just shoots to hell. There are some fun stranger missions you can activate here as well, like the noblest of men and a woman, and the really funny O Brother. Valentine is my favourite looking town, and with so much happening here, it's the best town in Red Dead Redemption 2. But let me know if you agree and which towns are your favourites in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, or check out some of my other videos on Red Dead 2. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.